it is the opposite. High fly ball. Deep left field. Oh, 27. Does it again. God. Fernando Tatis Jr. with a two-run shot as the Padres on the board. Welcome back to Free Baseball episode number 36. Uh, my name is Davis Bird, and I am joined, as always, by uh, the man, Jake Crumpler from Jake Crumplersville. From California. California. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I actually am, I am a man. California. You're right. I had a bar mitzvah, so that's right. I'm officially a man. No longer a boy. Now he is a man. Sneaking a little sunny reference. Uh, we just have a lot to talk about, so I feel like we just need to get into it. We're going to go down like awards, award winners, um, since more of them came out today. Some mm-hmm. early transactions in the season. Uh, if we get to it, uh, Jake wrote a really cool article at the start of the season um, trying to pinpoint some breakouts. And let's see how many actually came true. So no, we'll do other that. way around. Other way around. Other way around, I wrote it at the end of last season, breaking right. down buy or sell breakouts from last year and if they would be good this year. Well, yeah, pretty much same same thing. We'll see. We'll see if these players actually broke out or not. How about that? Actually, continued their breakout. Well, it was whether or not their breakouts one, were sustainable. One one of them on there is a no. You're and close I enough. It close is. enough. Ladies and gentlemen, this man is teaching your children. Yeah, one of the, one of the ones on there I know is Frank Schwindel, and, and that one did not not keep happening. Come on, yeah, don't spoil it, don't spoil it. That's the only one I really honestly remember off the top of my head. But anyway, uh, introduction, terrible introduction. Don't knock my profession, Jake. You <laughs> you freak. You live on the you live on the West Coast. Hey man, it's still. Well, I was gonna say it's still daytime, but it gets dark at like five o'clock now. So never yeah. mind. Yeah. Yeah. So congratulations on your on your fancy pants, West Coast man. Uh, anyway, Hank Aaron award winners, go ahead and start us off. Jake. Yes, we have two Hank Aaron award winners as we do every year. One for the AL, one for the NL. This might've been one of the most obvious choices in the most in recent memory in the AL. You have one of the best offensive seasons of all time, Aaron judge. And in the NL, you have the clearly best hitter in the national league, Paul Goldschmidt. Uh, I don't think there was any question who was going to win this one. So th- there's not really much to put your hands up in the air about or to you know discuss about. I think everybody knew Judge was going to win, and there weren't really many people that were in the territory that Goldschmidt was in. So it- it's just a-, a good precursor for what we might see in the MVP debate. Absolutely. Um, and if you want to listen to mine and Jake's MVP predictions, go find our last show, the 35th episode, where we, took, we talked about the BBWAA predictions uh and made our own so go check that out too when you're done watching this one uh moving on to the silver slugger award winners we can just run it down by position um in the al starting off with the catcher position is uh toronto blue jays catcher alejandro kirk yes that was the right choice i think i'm yeah, pulling up so the too. uh the finalists right now so i can refresh my memory um there were six finalists. What is going on? Why did they do so many finalists? Am I being stupid? Literally That's misspelled ins- Silver Slugger. Um, you know, maybe maybe the whole little dig at the start was right. Who misspelled Silver Slugger? I did. Where? Oh, googling it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Sliver Slugger. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, no, no. I think Kirk w- was the right choice. He had a, a right. really great run in the middle of the season. There were some other guys who had pretty solid years. I, I think it was like Sean Murphy and Cal Raleigh were probably the closest. I'm the list I'm looking at right now from MLB.com 
has six finalists and for some reason martin maldonado is in there i am like really what? confused because that is one of the worst hitters in baseball yeah that's stupid i think rutschman probably should have won but you know you think kirk. rutschman should have won over kirk yeah i think so just because really? of the just because of the volume and then he hit a lot more doubles um i thought had, kirk would have had more volume than rutschman well i mean i mean the disparity in volume because rutschman produced mm-hmm. almost the same as kirk in a lot mm-hmm. less volume. Um, Rushman had one less home run and he had like 35 doubles. Um, yeah. So his just, WRC plus was only like four points higher. Yeah, but he plays in new wonky. Uh, no, I like, know. I, yeah. I, I, WRC plus is supposed to take mm-hmm. that into account, but I don't know if it's adjusted to the new Orioles part because I think it does like a three year weighted average probably. Yeah. I, I think that sounds right. But I'm not sure. Anyway, I don't think. I don't think Kirk was a bad pick anyway. No, uh, no. So it's not like a big oh, throw your hands up in the air. Like this was stupid kind of mm-hmm. thing. Um, so moving on to first base, since that one's out of the way, uh, this one was taken by Nathaniel Lowe of the, te- of the Texas Rangers. Um, and the finalists for this, of course, were and Nathaniel Lowe, cause he won't go uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. The Toronto Blue Jays, Jose Abreu, uh, gross and Anthony Rizzo um, of the New York Yankees. So, I th- I also think this was maybe the right choice. It just seems weird because those other names yeah. are so big. Like, yeah, I mean, Rizzo and Abreu have sort of been controlling that Vlad win it last year. So it's pretty crazy to see, you know, Nathaniel Lowe come out of nowhere. But the man did bat 300 and hit 27 home runs with a 143 WRC+. plus. So, I mean, that's pretty deserving no matter how good everybody else was. I think Vladdy was probably the closest, even though Jose Abreu quietly had a really good season like he does every single freaking year. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's probably the right choice. Uh, yeah. Abreu's, I mean, you, Abreu kind of lost it in like the, like in the power numbers, like he, he dropped from 30 home runs previous season to 15. So yeah, that's crazy. That's his lowest home run total ever by a, a, quite a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I low, low pace them all in WRC plus. So I think that's fair. Yeah, I do too. Um, so I think that's pretty much pretty much the correct choice. Moving on to second base, uh, your winner here is Jose Altuve of the nominees, which is uh, which the runners up are Andre Simenez of the Cleveland Guardians, Marcus Simeon, who like after a really kind of slow start was very very good last year, um, quietly for a team that didn't really make a lot of noise, and DJ LeMahieu of the New York Yankees. I think this one is also pretty clear. Oh, yeah. Altuve deserved this uh, far and away, I think. Jimenez had a really great all-star season Mm -hmm. in semi, and like you said, really turned it on after a slow first couple of months. But, yeah, Altuve was great the entire year. Yeah. We talked about last week where um, Jordan Alvarez ended up being the third choice to be um, uh, for the AL MVP race. I think you probably could have very easily replaced him with Jose Altuve. Nobody would have really batted an eye. Yeah, Altuve really had a great year. That, I think that was a point uh, Foolish Bailey was making yeah. about and the Altuve. Big boy, big boy. Yeah, you watched that. I watched that. Yeah, uh, go last watch night that. Or something. Yeah, everybody. My mom kept going. Can we turn this off? Like, this is so weird. This guy is terrible. I was just <laughs> he, like, he is. That's. I was just point. like, he's basically me. You can't say that. You're, like, you're telling me that I'm terrible. Huh? Yeah. No, she knows I'm weird. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I love I love that. It was really funny. I think it was his, last year's was funnier, but it was still a great video. I love all the content Bailey puts out. But yeah, I think Altuve had a really good year. That's pretty underrated. Oh yeah. Uh, moving on to third base, this one was honestly probably the closest race between two of them, um, and it ended up being one out by podcast favorite Jose Ramirez, um, who beat. Rafael Devers of the Boston Red Sox, Alex Bregman of the Houston Astros, and Matt Chapman of the Toronto Blue Jays. A lot of Blue Jays in these finalist lists. But J-Ram is just so good, man. I, I, I could gush about that dude playing baseball for several hours, which we have done probably a compilation's worth uh, several hours of talking about Jose Ramirez on this podcast already. Mm-hmm. But he had, a, he had a great season, 29 home runs, like 126 – 126 RBIs and a 139 WRC plus for Jose. Um, I think the closest one to him in this list is Rafael Devers, but Devers had a hot streak. He dropped off a lot. Dropped off pretty hard. Yeah, one he saw a 140 WRC plus. Oh wow, Mm -hmm. it's pretty impressive. His first half was really good. His second half was terrible. Yes, 
So uh, J Ram like got him there. The, yeah, I, I Ramirez is definitely the rightful winner here. I'm sort of oh. want to see Devers first and second half splits. It says WRC plus first and second half for Devers was 170 in the first half and then 93 in the second half. Wow, that is not good. No, that's not. Uh, moving on to shortstop. This one was taken away by Xander Bogarts of the Boston Red Sox, uh, future um, San Francisco Giants slash Chicago Cup, if me and Jake have our way. Um, but he had beat out Carlos Correa of the Minnesota Twins, who is also now a free agent, Corey Seager of the Texas Rangers, and Bo Bichette of Toronto Blue Jays. This is full of Blue Jays. Um, but yeah, this Bogarts led an average um, but I don't know if this was the right one. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. This was, this one was really tough and I don't honestly think Bogarts should have won this one. Yeah. It was a tough choice. It's just weird to see Bogarts with only 15 home runs, but yeah, yeah like you said, I mean, did bat over 300, 307 to be exact with a 134 WRC plus like that's a really good season. It, yeah. It's just weird to like see such a high WRC plus with, with such a low Homer total. He did steal eight bases. I would think that Bichette would have been more deserving. He's still batted 290 with a 24 home runs, but his WRC plus was lower. I mean, you don't want to make that the end all be all and he stole more bases, but yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell. I think the only one that might've had a chance was Seager, but he really fell off, uh, towards the end of the season. I mean, he had led them with 33 home runs, but he had only a 117 WRC plus. So, I mean, if you're just looking solely at WRC plus Bogarts is the right choice there, but yeah, it's just weird that he only had 15 home runs and then it's like um, the best hitting shortstop in the AL. Correa very quietly had an amazing season though. Like he barely played. I know, but in the time that he barely played, he still had a, a 140 WRC plus. He hit 22 dingers. <clears throat> yeah, that's fair. I guess He's he didn't really barely play. 136 games. Yeah. Quietly did have a really good season. Yeah. So, like, Carlos Correa, I mean, he's going to get paid this offseason. All him and Bogarts, most likely. Again. And then, yes. And in the outfield, got lots of choices here. Um, of the finalists, there's Aaron Judge. I can I think you already can kind of tell. Aaron Judge uh, of the New York Yankees. Julio Rodriguez of the Seattle Mariners. Kyle Tucker of the Houston Astros. Mike Trout of the Los Angeles Angels, uh, the Los Angeles Mike Trouts and Shohei Otani's. Um, mm -hmm. Randy Rosarena, some MF named Randy from the Tampa Bay Rays. George Springer from uh, Toronto Blue Jays. Taylor Ward of the Angels, running out of breath. Anthony Santander of the Baltimore Orioles. Adelise Garcia of the Texas Rangers. And uh, Teoscar Hernandez, who we will talk about later of the Toronto Blue Jays. Where are your nominees here? And uh, your winners were Aaron Judge, J-Rod, and Mike Trout. I don't think there's any surprise there at all. Yeah, no, they, they all had amazing seasons. Judge is a clear choice. Mike Trout is always incredible, and he finished the season really strong. You remember he had that seven straight games with a home run. That was really cool. I was surprised to see Julio win. Like, Julio really had an incredible rookie debut, but I, I thought Tucker would have been higher up there. But, I mean... Julio, I don't know if he had the benefit of BABIP. I mean, he definitely did compared to Tucker, who had the lowest BABIP of his career at 261. So, I mean, that definitely hurt him a lot. But Julio had like 30 points over him in, in batting average, which is not really something you look at, but it is something you look at when you're thinking about Silver Slugger. So I think these are definitely the rightful three. There were definitely some other guys that had really great offensive seasons, but none of them that matched up with uh, these three giants in the American League. Absolutely. And moving on to the designated hitter position. Uh, a lot of big, big bats here. Led off by Shohei Otani of the Los Angeles Angels. The other half of the Los Angeles, uh, Mike Trouts and Shohei Otani's. Jordan Alvarez of the Houston Astros. Giancarlo Stanton of the New York Yankees. George Springer of the Toronto Blue Jays. And uh, Adelise Garcia, the Texas Rangers, nominated here. And this was taken away by MVP finalist. Jordan Alvarez. Um, I, I think that is probably the right choice. Although I would have liked. What do you to mean, probably? Win. Yeah, but I want I want Otani to win everything that he. Possibly I want Otani to win also, but he's not a better hitter than Jordan. Yeah, but still, I'm tired of Jordan had a Astros 185 nice WRC plus, bro. I'm tired of the Astros having nice things. Yeah, that's true. Things. 
then you're gonna have to do bad things to them. Well, I don't have I don't have any input on that. But yeah, Jordan was like guaranteed to win it. Yeah, um, I mean Otani had a great season, 142 WRC plus with 34 dingers. But I mean Jordan 185 WRC plus. I think think that was second in all of baseball. So he really was I- incredible this year with the bat and is probably going to be one of the best hitters in all of baseball for a long time to come because this was his aged 25 season somehow. Oh, yeah. Um, moving on to the utility position now. Uh, there's some cool names in here. You got Shohei Otani. I know that guy. Uh, DJ LeMayhew. Um, what? What? And uh, Luis Arias, Jake Crumpler's favorite fantasy baseball player of all time, Luis Arias. And uh, Luis Renjifo of the Los Angeles Angels. Uh, Luis Renjifo should never have been on this. this <laughs> we week, talked about this and, when we went over the finals. Like, that's so dumb. He had a 103 oh, WRC yeah. plus in 17 yeah. years. This was this was uh, pretty much a mile away. Yeah, Luis Arias. Well, um, as as much as I love Arias, and I, I think he should have won. If Shohei Otani was up for a vote, I mean, I think he should have won that. For it must have been must have been like a split vote type of thing where it's like you can nominate guys at different positions right so i'm pretty sure when people are voting for this it's not like they're voting for each position they vote for all the silver sluggers in one league most likely so they like put otani and then he's getting split votes between dh and utility so he missed out probably on both of them because people weren't like choosing which spot that he should be in he should have been put in the dh spot but yeah I mean, yeah, I, th- I think it's fair that Arias won, but I think Otani's better than all the guys that he was up against, but it sounds like it's like a split vote just by where they were placing him on his, on their ballots. Yeah, Arias also, the uh, he won the batting title, didn't he? Yes, sir, 316. Judge. Yep. He beat out Judge. Yeah, so congratulations to Luis Arias. I, isn't this his first silver slugger, too? Oh, for sure, definitely. Yeah, yeah. it has to be. Um, so congratulations, Luis Arias. He had more home runs this year than he had in his entire career also. What did he have, like six? Eight. <laughs> he had six before this year. <laughs> I'm yeah. mad it was that close. <laughs> <laughs> you were like memeing. Meme yeah. six. Like, uh, yeah, actually. Yeah, he did. Let's go. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the NL side. The side we're, we're probably more familiar with. Um, Luis Arias. So... Uh, Good catcher position. This uh, your nominees here were Will Smith of the Los Angeles Dodgers, um, JT Real Muto of the World Series runner-up, womp womp, uh, Philadelphia Phillies, Wilson Contreras of the Chicago Cubs, and Travis Darno of the Atlanta Braves. Um, and this was won by JT Real Muto of the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, yeah, you have any thoughts for this one? I think it was a, a pretty tough crowd and I, I, I don't have, I don't think they gave us the voting for this. So like, I can't see how close it actually turned out to be, but this seems like a, a hard decision because I think Contreras, Real Muto and Will Smith all had very equally good seasons. Contreras led in WRC plus by like three and uh, Real Muto and Smith were separated by like one point, but like they're all really good. I think, Contreras like played the the least out of them uh not 100 percent sure on that one uh, but Re- games yeah and uh Smith was at 137 so yeah he played the least out of them but like Real Muto is just like the the guy who just plays freaking every day and he also beat everybody out in the speed department and Smith I mm-hmm. think is more of like I don't know, underrated guy. So I think it makes sense that Real Muto came away with this one, especially because he's got that speed component. I think that does sort of play a factor into Silver Slugger a bit, even though that's not like specifically part of batting. It's part of being an offensive threat. So I I think that's probably what made the difference. And then the volume as well. I mean, he was very close to Smith in terms of volume. I think they were separated by only a couple of uh, games. Smith played 137 games, and I think Real Muto was 139. So like they're, they're right there on top. On, oh, oh my god! I almost said they're almost, they're on top of each other. Whoa, sexual podcast. Um, <laughs> Late night, but Late yeah, night podcast. <laughs> exactly. I think they're. I think all three of those guys are pretty deserving, and so I think it's fair that Real Muto won it. Yeah, it sucks because I would have liked for Wilson to win, but you know I mm-hmm. understand JT getting it. Uh, moving on to the first base position, nominees here are Paul Goldschmidt of the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, the 
former Brave, now Dodger. This sucks. Freddie Freeman um, of your Los Angeles Dodgers. Jake Crumpler's favorite baseball team. Pete Alonzo of the New York Mets. Matt Olson, uh, Freddie Freeman's son that now plays for the Braves. Matt Olson. Um, and Christian Walker of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, who do you think won this one, Jake? I don't know. Paul Goldschmidt? Yeah, Paul Goldschmidt by a mile on this one. Um, this is a freaking tough crowd. Like they, this is like they had some really good seasons here, and Goldschmidt probably ran away with it because he was so much better than everyone else. But like Freeman, Alonzo, and Olson all had really great offensive seasons, and Christian Walker quietly hit like freaking thirty-five home runs. Yeah, um, Paul Goldschmidt had a really stupid good season. Otherwise, I think this was Pete Alonzo's to win. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Freddie bat like well over 300. Yeah, but like Pete Alonso had the best average of his career, like second best on base. He still had a 143 yeah. WRC plus. Holy, uh, he, sh- holy. Freddie hit 325. What the fuck? That's crazy. Pete Alonso hit 40 bombs and had 131 RBI. He stole five yeah. bags. Look at that dude. Damn. Thrown off the wheels. He's fast. But yeah, Paul Goldschmidt won this one in his sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second base because this one was also kind of a weird one. Yeah. Um, nominees here are Jeff McNeil, New York Mets, Jake Cronenworth of the San Diego Padres, Cattell Marte of the Arizona Diamondbacks, Colton Wong of the Milwaukee Brewers, and Brendan Rogers of the podcast favorite baseball team, Colorado Rockies. Um, Jeff McNeil won this one. Uh, uh, I don't know. That makes sense to me. All the other guys sort of sucked. Yeah, like the nominees Cronenworth, were Cronenworth, bad. Yeah, bad. I mean, McNeil quietly batted 326, which is yes. incredible. That's the best of his career in a season of more than 65 games. Oh, yeah. So, like, I, that makes sense to me. But, yeah, the, the other nominees, like, Cronenworth was pretty meh. Cattell was, like, not up to his standards. Colton Wong was... Just Colton Wong. Wong was Colton Wong. Yeah, like, how Brendan did Rogers, this guy get here? Brendan Rodgers is mad because he's playing in cores anyway. So, like, yeah, McNeil probably sort of ran away with this. And I don't think if you had asked – I mean, maybe at the end of the season, like, if you had asked people, like, who do you think is the best offensive second baseman in the NL, you'd be like, oh, uh, I guess McNeil. Is he bad at 326? But, like, before the season, I don't think you're thinking, like, oh, my God, McNeil, far and away the best hitter in the NL. But he ran away with it. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Brendan Rodgers played his entire season at home in Coors, and he had a 92 WRC plus and only 13 dingers. And he was yeah phenomenal. because he he's hurt that because you're hurt by playing in Coors. I know, but like he didn't do like anything at all, and he got nominated for this. Yeah, I mean he batted 313 at home and 218 away, so yeah, it sounds like he did That's... play well in Coors. <laughs> yeah, but like, overall. How to 117 WRC plus at home. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying the 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 field was awful here. Yes. So pretty easy for McNeil to take that one. Oh yeah. McNeil, uh one time 20 home run hitter. Um let's move to third base. This one's surprising. Yeah, um your nominees for third base are Manny Machado, um, of the San Diego Padres, non Norman Aramondo of the St. Louis Cardinals. Austin Riley of the Atlanta Braves and Justin Turner, uh, formerly now of the Los Angeles Dodgers, did into Nerf contract. Um, but Nolan Arenado came away with this one, and I don't know about that one, Chief. I don't know about that one. I mean, it's really I close. He, yeah. You think they, they robbed Manny? Yes. Machado I think robbed. it's really close. They they were one point away from each other in WRC+. Plus. Uh, I mean, Arenado, I, they, they had very similar statistical seasons. And, like, we're not factoring in defense. I think they're both very similar in defense. Maybe they're just like, oh, well, Arenado doesn't strike out. That's really cool. Um, But, yeah, I don't know. I I feel like they had very, very similar seasons on the offensive side. And I I don't know how they decided between the two. I was pretty surprised that – I don't know. Austin Riley had a really great season, too. So, that's pretty pretty crazy. That's three really deserving guys right there. But, yeah, I think you could go either way with Arenado or Machado there, to be honest. I don't. Know. You don't like that. You don't like no, I don't. giving praise to Arenado. Well, it's okay. We can move on if you like. No, I don't. Well, I think <laughs> Nolan struck out less, and he hit like I think he hit like twenty more doubles. I'm I'm looking. I'm invest. I'm investigating. Investigative anyway. research. 
Anyway, moving on. Manny's still Rob. Yeah, this league's, uh, it's league's really, in the mud. Really close. Nah, Manny got robbed. This league's in the mud. Um, let's right. go to short. Let's go to shortstop. Yeah, I hate I'm baseball tired. now. I'm tired of the Cardinals. <laughs> tired of them doing stuff. Stop it. Shortstop. This one was pretty cool. Uh, this was Willie Adams of the Milwaukee Brewers, Francisco Lindor, the New York Mets, Dansby Swanson, now a free agent, uh, but won this with the Atlanta Braves. And uh, Trey Turner, who is your winner of the Silver Slugger shortstop um, with the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's also now a free agent. Crazy shortstop class this time around. Trey Turner, have you seen the, the cool hype video with John Hamm? No, because I don't like the Dodgers. Seen... Yeah, well, it was it was a hype video of like him selling himself in free agency. It's like the yeah, one I know. that they're sending the team. Like, I heard about it. I didn't watch it. it. Wow. Jake. Hater I hate Trey baseball. Turner now until he's on a new team. Well, he's going to be on a new team, though. I know, but, but not yet. It's not official. Right now, he's still a Dodger. 2020 season for Trey Turner. <laughs> yeah. Light work. Classic, classic for him. He's, I don't he's know, actually he's only, like quietly he's actually such only a had good two player. Like, I feel like uh, the way that Jose Ramirez is underrated as one of the best players in baseball, Trey Turner is the same. It's not in fantasy. In fantasy, like Trey Turner, Jose Ramirez, super – super uh, appreciated because of their speed. Like Trey Turner is quietly like one of the best players in baseball. Like he perennially bats 300 hits 20 home runs is one of the fastest guys in baseball. And he plays freaking shortstop. Like, no, I feel like nobody talks about him. Yeah. I back also, to back six war seasons. I also feel like Trey Turner has been around forever, even though I know he hasn't. He um, sort of has. I know. 2015. Like, yeah. But like he had a cup of coffee in 2015 and then I know. I don't know. I, he's been around. He's been around the block, um, but he's actually only had two 2020 seasons. So really, I guess he's just a bum. Um, I don't know. He got injured a lot. That's probably that is a true. big reason. That is true. Yeah, yeah, I think I think he was. He had a 12, right 12 season. That's yeah. So cute. Yeah, I think he, he was definitely very deserving. I think uh, Adonis oh, yeah. had a good season, and Dansby obviously had a really great season, but Trey Turner is so freaking good. Oh, yeah. Let's move on to the outfielders. Your nominees, I got to take a deep breath for this one. Your nominees for outfield, the NL, are Mookie Betts of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Kyle Schwarber of the Philadelphia Phillies, Juan Soto of the Washington Nationals and San Diego Padres, Starling Marte of the New York Mets, Jock Peterson of San Francisco Giants. Did he just accept a qualifying offer? Yeah, we'll get there. Okay, cool. Michael Harris, the second, the Atlanta Braves. Brian Reynolds of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hunter Renfro of the Milwaukee Brewers. And Brandon Nimmo of the New York Mets. Um, and your winners for this one were Mookie Betts of the Dodgers, Kyle Schwarber, and Juan Soto. Um, I make the right choices here? What do you think? Yeah, I think Mookie and Schwarber yeah, definitely, definitely deserved it. I, I had a friend that was like, said that any of the other finalists should have won over Soto. I don't think that's true. I think it's it's hard to see Soto as regular Soto when he has like a down season in his terms and a down season in his, in his terms is a 145 WRC plus. Right. So it's like when you're putting up him putting him up against himself, yeah. And it's also just like his BABIP was crazy. He pulled his average down to 242 cuz his BABIP was 249. So uh, that's not really his fault, but like you're looking at end of season results. I still think like even a 145 WRC plus uh, that tops everybody else on this list except for maybe Michael Harris. Yeah, look that up. Michael Harris was at 130. He t- he's still a better WRC plus than anybody else on the list because I know Brian Reynolds and Renfro and Nimmo aren't up there. So yeah, I mean I still think Soto's very deserving. Like even if it's a down year for his terms, he's an incredible hitter like he just walks so much more than he strikes out he's in he's insane i just i'm excited for him to have that like mvp season where he just bats like 400 with 40 home runs but it it didn't happen this year we'll we'll see but yeah i I still think he's he's very deserving even if he's only got a 145 wrc plus yeah i i think so too and the other the other names on the list were good, but they genuinely weren't like that level of good. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's some decent names on there. It's just like, really? You, you can't really compete with one set of who had a bad year, not even like a down year, a bad year by his standards. Um, 
and it's still like better than everybody else on the list. So yeah, mm. I think it I think it's right. Um, so let's move on to the designated hitter and your finalists for the designated hitter. Let's get past catcher because this article is weird. Um, Josh Bell, San Diego Padres. Albert Pujols, the 70-year-old man that played for the Cardinals this year. Luke Voigt, the Washington Nationals and San Diego Padres and whatever other teams he ended up on. Justin Turner and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Charlie Blackman of the podcast favorite, Colorado Rockies. And Bryce Harper of the Philadelphia Phillies. And uh, this one was won by Josh Bell. But I think it can be said that like Harper, if he actually played the full season, uh, wins this like 100 times out of 100. But who was the deserving winner? Josh Bell. No. It was Albert freaking Pujols, bro. No. He had a 150 WRC plus. Yeah, because Josh they Bell just... hit 17 home runs. Yeah, because they had that old bunt going out there, literally just hitting off of guys that were throwing him BP the whole time because they are like, hey, this old man needs to break a record. Yeah, and he should have got Without another Albert. silver slugger for it. That's no. Yeah, I think that's Trash. stupid. Bum. He had a WRC yeah, right. plus 27 points higher than Josh Bell's. I definitely yeah. think Pujols mm-hmm. deserve this. And I'm actually upset now because the rest of that field is disgusting. All of them were not good this year. Voight, Turner, Blackman, and I mean, Harper was injured the whole year. Yeah, Blackman. but Josh Bell. This year, I don't know how he was on here. Josh Bell fell off so hard in the second half. I, 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 like, I guess only in terms of volume is the only way you can choose him over Pujols. I don't know why people didn't just give Pujols an honorary one, to be honest, but. I guess that's how it's going to be. But, yeah, I think Pujols deserved it. He had a 150 WRC plus, bro. Nah. Nah. Uh, I'm not not with that. All right. It's okay to be wrong sometimes. I'll be wrong on this one. Get him out of here. (laughs) I'm tired of that old old man needs to go away. He's gone, bro. He's retired. Not soon enough. Uh, Let's go to the utility roll. This is uh, got some weird names, too. Jeff McNeil's on here. Uh, Chris Taylor, Los Angeles Dodgers. Tyro Estrada uh, of the San Francisco Gigantes that play baseball. Tommy Edmond, St. Louis Cardinals. Brandon Jury of the San Diego Padres. This one was won by Brandon Jury, who basically rode that super, super hot streak <laughs> into uh, into doing this because he was also pretty bad in the second half of the season. Yeah, all of the guys the Padres acquired were pretty terrible, to be honest. But, yeah, yes. I think uh, Drury definitely had some changes to his batted ball profile and, and the way he was uh, attacking pitches and stuff. So I think it was definitely a legitimate breakout. I, that'll be something I probably explore when I do the buy or sell breakouts once again. But I, I think he was the deserving winner here. Amongst the finalists, obviously, I think McNeil what is, was a little bit better, but he – probably got the split votes thing between second base and utility but the other guys here aren't really that close to drury who hit 28 home runs with the 123 wrc plus tyro strada is the nl version of luis renhifo on this list of like why is this guy here no nah, bro tyro strada's goat we had a 107 wrc plus how is he on this list what was your wrc plus uh, what was your WRC plus? A <laughs> hundred. Um, yeah, I doubt it, Jake. Bro, come on. Did Chris Taylor, do you? Nothing, presumably. No, Chris Taylor's terrible. He's on the Dodgers. Yeah, he was he was pretty terrible this last year. Don't talk about that fellow Virginian. Love Chris Taylor. Uh, that's it for our Silver Slugger Award winners that we need to run down. Uh, let's run over some transactions. I'll let you kick this one off, Jake. Sure. Yeah, this one happened shortly after our last podcast. It might have even had already happened, but we definitely didn't talk it about did. it. The Padres re-signed relief pitcher Robert Suarez to a five-year, $46 million deal that includes an opt-out after the third year of the 2025 campaign. It's a big deal for a guy that has literally played one season in the majors after playing for a few years in Japan and being one of the best relievers over there in the MPB. It's just, it's a pretty incredible contract for a guy of his age, of his caliber. He was really great this last season 2.27 ERA across 47 and two thirds innings pitched. He struck out a lot of guys 32% of the time he was striking out batters. But he did get injured during the season. He's already 31. Five-year contract is long for pitchers. We've seen this in the past with 
the top tier of relievers like Melanson, Chapman, uh, Diaz, like we talked about just last week. But we've also seen the flip side of it with guys like, I don't know, like BJ Ryan, Brett Cecil, guys like that, Scott Linebrink, guys that got big deals like this and it didn't pan out because relievers are such – it's volatile like the, yeah asset, volatile yeah. is the right words like this position <laughs> relief pitcher is the most fickle volatile position in probably any professional sport um just because like it's honestly a volume thing where it's like you could have one good year where just everything seems to go to plan and then they will base like you could have an entire contract based off of that and then you just get blown up next year year after year you get unlucky a couple times and you're out of a job um and that's just how the position is yeah but uh, yeah is, that's dope he got his money yeah congratulations to robert suarez just i just i think it's probably a little too early for them to do this and they gave him they gave him a such a long contract i know it has to mm-hmm. opt out but at the same time he's already what 31 32 He's 30 he's going into his age 32 season so yeah right. they'll have him through like age 36 which is crazy and he's a he's a velo pitcher, isn't he? Uh-huh. Velo pitcher, fastball sinker. I think fastball yep. sinker change. Like, yep, yeah. So, like, I don't know. That's whatever. Padres are Padres. Yeah, let's let's hope it pans out for them. But yeah, that's got a, a the ability to really turn into really, something not really great. blow up. Yeah. All right, let's go to our next transaction, um, and this is the uh, Rangers trading he's like second base utility kind of guy, super utility, Nick Solak to the Reds. Uh, Rangers receive cash considerations. Everyone's favorite trade chip. Um, he's the goat cast considerations. Oh my God. Yeah. He's pull up the, pull up the, cool, the time. pull up the cool baseball card picture of him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nick Solak is like a weird, he's like a weird utility because he can't field it well at any position. Um, he's like a miserable fielder at every single position, but they'll throw him out in any of them. Um, and he's supposed to be making up for it with the bat, which just kind of deserted him last year. Um, he's already relatively old. I mean, he's 27. I say old because like, that's how old, like that's pretty much how old I am. Um, and I don't know. Red Reds get a guy that is a guy. That's pretty much a guy that plays baseball is what they got from Nick Sola. I don't know. He's he's got some potential. I mean, he shows he some potential I mean, in the minors, and I really mm-hmm. liked him when he first came up. And he, he's he's had some times in the majors where he's looked really good. This past season was not one of them, but even as no. recently as twenty twenty one, I'm actually never mind. Uh, he's never really been that great in the majors. 2019, he had a 126 WRC plus across 135 flight appearances. Very small sample, but still, he's shown the ability to hit pretty well when he is on. And it should be interesting moving into one of the best hitters parks in all of baseball. What the Reds can do with him, I know they're very lined up with driveline as well so maybe they can figure something out there and he could be like the next brandon jury i think this is a guy in a in fantasy sense like if you're doing like a pretty deep league 15 teams or whatever and you're getting towards the end of the draft and you're like oh who should i pick you want to be doing like lottery tickets right so you want to go for like a nick sola he's got the ability to break out and if not you drop him after a couple weeks because you're like oh this guy's not it's not happening this year but it's definitely a guy that you know, could break out finally. I mean, 27 is supposed to be, I mean, this was his 28th, seven season. So he's going to be 28 next year, but I think he's still got the ability to break out. It's not going to be one that I think is going to be a game changer that puts the reds in world series contention though. Right. Uh, the reds always kind of like have guys like this to just tend to do mm-hmm. stuff like Brandon jury. Um, he'll Scooter probably turn. Jeanette. Yeah. I was literally was going to say he's going to turn into right-handed Scooter Jeanette. Yeah. Um, Four homers so, in a game. Yeah. He was a he was a freak for like two years and then just fell off face of the planet. Uh, time to pull up a scooter Jeanette on was the it, graphs. It was like he was good for like a very, very short stretch. Oh man, two he batted two ninety five with twenty seven home runs and then batted three ten with twenty three home runs. It was like a one twenty five WRC plus, but dang. One twenty three. Yeah, he was really good. And then yeah. he just stopped playing. He had one more year, twenty nineteen. Yeah, do you know who he played he with didn't during play that? Year? Anymore. Two teams. Yeah, do you know who one of them was, Jake? 
I'm gonna my test team. Your, I'm gonna test oh my Satan. We're gonna test God. your fandom, just, bozo. He walked one and a half percent of the time. Holy moly! Yeah, dude's a dude's a free swinger. He just said, "I'm swinging at everything," Who's and then teams just gave up on him after yeah. two incredible All Star seasons. Dang, mm-hmm. that's crazy. All right, remember some yeah. dudes. Anyway, have you guys have you ever seen the the thing where it's like? women talking about stuff and then it's like a uh, guys could literally just sit and be like hey remember this remember this athlete remember this sports guy for yeah. several hours and we'd be happy i do that have you have you seen the uh john boy b ref uh like guess that player game they've been posting no it's not on the main channel but it's just like they'll put up just a baseball reference screenshot of like all the stats and then you're supposed to guess who it is no, I bet I could not do that though. You should do it. It's oh, it's pretty fun. Oh, no. I do it with my oh, brother, no, and I'm just like, <laughs> I do it with my brother. I look at it for like a second. I'm like, I know who it is, and my brother's just like sitting there for like ten minutes, just like, well, I know it's not this guy, <laughs> just for so long, and we finally get it. But yeah, they're, they're pretty fun. They start out really easy the first couple ones they did, and then everybody's complaining that they're too easy. So oh, they, yeah. they they've been getting harder, but yeah, they they're pretty fun. You should check them out. I will. Uh, moving on to baseball guys that everyone likes, just like Scooter Jeanette. Uh, the Rays traded G-Man Choi to the Pirates uh, in exchange for Jack Hartman, who I know absolutely nothing about. Because he's a him. minor leaguer. I know he's a minor leaguer, but I don't know anything about that dude. So He's played one year in single A for the Pirates. He pitched 18 and two-thirds innings with a 6.27 ERA, so he sounds pretty dang good. He was a fourth-round pick in 2020. He was the seventh pick in that round, 108th overall. His baseball reference page is very weird because it says his positions are relief pitcher, third baseman, and second baseman. Ooh. Third base base baseman. I don't see any hitting stats on Fangra. No clue, man. That is weird. Well, that might explain why he's such a bad pitcher. But, yeah, he's just got – he yeah. walks batter seven, seventeen percent of the time. That's That is awful. Good. Yeah, his strikeout to walk ratio percentage, the difference oh, between his strikeout shit, rate man. and his walk rate is 3%. That is awful. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe the Rays see something in him. I mean, obviously they do. They win. They never lose a trade. But, yeah, it's sad to see fan favorite G-Man Choi going, but the Pirates are really becoming fun now. You know, they have three Koreans now. Yeah, you said that. Yeah, Hoi, Hoi, Park, Hoi Park, G-Man Choi, and... Who's the other guy? They still Kong. they don't have they say so they don't have Kong anymore, do they? No. Didn't he Trump get thirty two as they didn't Trump get thirty two DUIs? Yeah, exactly. Ji Huan Bay, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. He, he's a top prospect guy. So yeah, that's pretty dope. they be I think the Pirates are really gonna be fun this next year. But I don't think they're gonna make the, the postseason, but I think they're gonna be like bad this but year's, fun. Uh, yeah, they're gonna be like this year's Orioles. I'm cool with that. That'd be cool with that. Uh, too. Another another little transaction. Um, Nick Anderson, formerly of the Braves, or not, Braves, not sucks. formerly of the guy. Rays, uh, signed by the Braves. Um, contract pretty much a million. He's gonna get. A, I think it's like a minor league deal. He's still control. No, it's it's a major league deal, but yeah, he he's still got control left because the Rays like released him. Yeah, the Rays are like really cutting costs, and I don't know if they're preparing to make a move or no what? no no it, it's a it's a 40-man roster crunch <sighs> you give it at the same time it's like bro the rays the rays don't have any money they could still if they cut off any more money they'll just have a zero dollar payroll guys are playing guys are paying them to play for them <laughs> exactly please let us play yeah i don't know i think maybe they realize how much of a horrible person nick anderson is did you see like his homophobic stuff earlier this yeah year? Yeah. yeah i did not good yeah so yeah i don't like him anymore so i mean of course the braves were like oh we'll take him okay. we don't Maybe care about good. people's rights in georgia um but yeah he's he was really good once once in a oh my god he's only once played in a blue years. Thing. holy moly he only played one year basically yeah, I thought he played a lot more. I remember him being like the best reliever in baseball, and then it was just no, one year. He'd look really good, and then he'd be terrible, and they'd send him to the minors. He's only played in 2019, 2020, and 2021, and in 2020 mm-hmm. and 2021 combined, he has 22 innings. Yep. 
I thought that guy played more. He had 65 innings in 2019, and that's about it. Damn. Well, yeah, I guess it makes sense that the Rays gave up on him. I think he's just got uh, – he's obviously got a lot of potential, but it's going to take some uh, Braves magic, which they seem to have a overflowing supply of. Oh, yeah. Um, moving on. Talk about another reliever, um, the Astros. Houston, the World Series champion Houston Astros hey. have re-signed – a big part of their bullpen, and they got Rafael Montero re-signed to three-year deal worth thirty-four and a half million dollars. So, congratulations to Rafael Montero getting that bag. He's a little bit older too as a reliever, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, he was he was nails last year. Really good mm-hmm. in that bullpen. Yeah, it's a uh, pretty impressive. I feel like it's very similar vein to Suarez. Uh, Montero has appeared a lot more in the majors and he came up as a starter. So he's got a lot more innings in the majors, but he's really never been too great other than like 2019 and a 30 inning sample every other year. His ERA is well over four. So this is basically his first good season, but this was also like his first full season with the Astros. So maybe they like really see something in him. Then they're just like, you know, like this is who he's actually going to be, be like, we, we, implemented a new game plan so this is how it's going to be but yeah it's it's pretty interesting to see him get such a big deal especially going into his age 32 season 33 years is pretty solid it'll be 32 33 and 34 so that's i guess that's pretty solid he had a 2.37 era this past year with a very solid 27 percent strikeout rate he's also a velo guy he averages 96 and a half miles per hour on his fastball that was at a career high this year so the astros definitely unlocked something from this guy and he looked really good in the postseason as well let's see nine innings 1.93 era so yeah it's just continued the whole season i think it's a very interesting deal uh probably want to keep around as many relievers as you can the astros obviously will now have an even greater influx of money after winning the world series so it's pretty uh, i don't know i was gonna say pertinent that they retain him but i i wouldn't say pertinent i would say that the relievers go pretty early on in, on in the off season. So you want to get the guys that you think are going to be good. And they're very familiar with him. They know what they got out of him. They obviously did something different with him that resulted in very positive results. So I think Montero is a, is a pretty solid re-signing for the Astros and that bullpen, just keeping that bullpen intact is probably very key because they, we mentioned during the world series episode that they had the lowest ERA by a bullpen in postseason history. So keeping that bullpen intact is probably pretty essential. And now I don't think they lost anybody else. So now they can just add anybody else they want or or just maintain what they've already got. They don't have to worry about the bullpen really at all anymore. So they can just add elsewhere, put their focus on Justin Verlander, who's one of the biggest free agents out there, who we'll get to in a minute. But Davis disappeared, made a big noise and disappeared. I think he saw that we were about to talk about Jason Hayward, and he said, get me out of here. I'm not talking about that, man. I don't want to talk about the Cubs being bad and signing oh, one of the worst contracts in recent memory. But, yeah, so that's Rafael Montero. I'll skip over Jason Hayward uh, so that we can come back to it and talk about Martin Perez accepting the qualifying offer. Oh, I bet he sent me a chat. Oh, okay, he's got something going on. I don't know what it is, but something. Um, yeah, Martin Perez accepted the qualifying offer. That was the first guy. Oh, whoa, there's a guy. In a, whoa, there's a guy. I'm and back. He's got a yellow there's shirt a gun. On. I know. There yellow was shirt guy. Somebody broke into your house with a gun, and you went and karate chopped him in the neck, and now you're back? No, I didn't karate chop him, but I uh, I hit him with like a jump kick, like a, oh. a roundhouse, and uh, he died instantly. He actually blew <laughs> up into a million pieces. All right, I yeah. I cleaned well, it up, too, so I did that really fast. So oh what did I miss? God. Uh, I just talked about Rafael Montero for like five minutes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um, did you skip? Did you skip the next one? I w- I did skip it, but I thought okay. I said that's probably why you left because you saw that we were about to talk about Jason Hayward, and you're like, oh no, I got to get out of here. Yeah. Um, Jason Hayward is bad at baseball, but I love <laughs> and him. And he today. was released. Yeah. And he was released by my favorite baseball team, the Chicago Cubs. Uh, he'll end up most likely getting a, a deal to be a fourth outfielder on some team that'll contend. And he'll play good defense, and he'll when he actually plays, he'll uh, strike out and hit weak grounders. So, thank you, Jason Hayward, for your speech during rain delay. 
um, during the 2016 World Series. Love you, but uh, the Cubs need to move on from him because they just actually added uh, their actual top prospect to their 40-man roster, and you can expect Brennan Davis to be with the Chicago Cubs at some point in this upcoming season. Where do you think he signs? Because I know where I know. Uh, probably Braves is my bet. I'm guessing the Dodgers. Probably the Dodgers, and then he'll be uh, Ihanser Alberto, type, and he'll somehow get three no, more no, out no, of him. No. He's yeah. gonna be way. I think they're gonna like turn him into a monster because his big problem is ground balls, right? His big problem is he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> his big problem is he sucks at baseball. Now that he hits ground ball, uh, bro, he they're gonna like DFA it. Cody Bellinger and then turn Jason Hayward into a monster. It, it, it's crazy that Jason Hayward fell off so far because I remember when he debuted and it was like, this is gonna be one of the best players of all time because he was like going up against the Pester Posey launch. and Ricky of the Year Award. But yeah, that launch angle, If I mean, they did it with like Justin Turner. They did it with Max Muncy. They did it with Chris Taylor. If they can just get him to hit the ball in the air more, like, I don't know. I, they're going to they're gonna do something crazy with him, and he's going to be an incredible player. Or mm, I was going to say the Phillies, but they do have Brandon Marsh now, but and they have too many outfielders now. But, yeah, that would be cool if the, the Phillies, because they have that hitting coach, Kevin Long. Yeah, he's really good. Uh, but yeah, they don't have really any room for Hayward, and they wouldn't need a center fielder if March was March wasn't there. So, I think it'll be interesting. I think he goes to a, a, one of those analytically focused teams, maybe even the Rays, because they lost uh, Kiermaier. They declined his option, so I think maybe he goes to the Rays and like the because the, they they know how to weigh like how much fielding you can have instead of hitting, right? So like I don't know Brett Phillips, who they had for years, who's just not a great hitter, but is a really great fielder, but they got like the most out of him. I think they could do that with Hayward and sort of maybe turn him around a little offensively. But yeah, I think that'll be an actually like an interesting one to watch just to see, does he end up on like a shitty team and then just like gives is given the opportunity to play a bunch or does he like want to go to an analytically focused team that could actually make him good again? Um, I don't know. He's not, that old is the thing like he feels like he's like a guy that's like on the verge of his career being over because of his like rapid rapid decline he's 32 Mm -hmm. he's 32 years old like he'll be going into his age 33 season actually but like he's just i don't know what his deal is it's because his launch angle was decent last year he didn't get a whole lot of playing time in the first place but like I don't know. I don't. I personally, watching him play baseball, he's not good at baseball. Like at, flat out, um, he could very well go to a team that is analytically like analytically focused, and they could fix him. But he could also be a guy that's stuck in Cubs ways, where he's still a Cubs hitter um, because they're just like they have gone through so many hitting coaches, and he just hasn't been able to refine his approach. And now he might just be stuck in that. Mm-hmm. But I, I hope I hope he does go somewhere, and I hope he does succeed. But it's just not going to be the Cubs. Um, moving on, Martin Perez accepted a qualifying offer from the Texas Rangers, um, to return to the Rangers where he had really great season. Um, and, uh, he gets paid for his, for his work there. So qualifying offer, of uh, 19.65 million for Martin Perez. What is that? Uh, wasn't he making about five and a half last year? No idea. I think he was making five last year. Couldn't tell you, but yeah, uh, probably a good decision by him. I mean, he was a big prospect coming up, but he's really never had a season like he did this year with a 2.89 ERA across 196 innings. Pretty incredible season that he had. It was just like a run of just having a great feel for his like cutter change of fastball combo. And I, I'm not totally sure that it continues. He had a 3.80 XFIP, which is a whole run difference from his ERA. So he's probably not going to be as good as he was last year. So I don't know, take the money while you can pretty cool for Martin Perez to get that. Uh, the Rangers probably need as much pitching as they can get, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think the, they had to offer him the QO and I don't think Perez really, <clears throat> was going to get some crazy multi-year deal after this, but maybe this is sort of betting on himself, while also guaranteeing him a lot of money. Yeah, he actually was on a one-year, four million dollar contract, so he gets a fifteen over a fifteen and a half million dollar raise. Well done. Uh, 
for that qualifying offer. Another guy who's accepted a qualifying offer, this time from San Francisco Giants, is uh, Jock Peterson. He has an NSFW nickname that I'm not going to say, but I sure do want to. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Jock, Jock Peterson uh, Jock Peterson accepts a qualifying offer to return to the Giants. Mr. Giants fan, what are your thoughts here? Yes, let's go. The boy, the, the pearl guy, the uh, big underwear man um yeah he, he, he's the boy he, he's getting a lot of money uh getting himself another shot to go out there in free agency next year uh on the giants team that had produced the best season of his career offensively 144 wrc plus 23 home runs his average was all the way up to 274 which is a career high by quite a large margin so pretty cool for jock to get some money and also to get him back in town i think he really fit well with that giants team he seemed to enjoy playing there he sort of got like a fire lit under him that the dodgers had been suppressing for all these years but yeah it's a uh, pretty weird to see a, a guy come from the dodgers but he did have that brief stint with the Cubs and the Braves for that one year. So I don't know. Uh, we both have ties to Jock, and uh, I think everybody likes Jock a lot, especially because his brother is sort of cool too. Um, but, yeah, glad to have him back. The Giants are going to need some punch in that lineup if they're going to compete at all next year. Absolutely. Some big names have declined qual- – all declined qualifying offers. This free agent class is going to be loaded. Uh, Aaron Judge declined. Trey Turner declined. Uh, Xander Bogarts, Jacob DeGrom, Dansby Swanson, Carlos Rodon, Brandon Nemo, Wilson Contreras, Chris Bassett, Anthony Rizzo, and Nathan Yovaldi have all declined the qualifying offer from their respective teams that had their rights. Um, mm-hmm. If anybody's confused about why some big free agent that obviously should have gotten a qualifying offer didn't get one, it's because you can only be offered at once. So these guys will never be able to have the qualifying offer put on them again. All of these guys now have draft pick compensation attached to them. So teams might be wary of signing the guys on the lower end, uh, Uvalde, Bassett, Contreras, those guys, um, maybe not Contreras, maybe Nimmo, because uh, they'll have to give up some form of draft pick, whether that be a compensation pick in the first round or the second round or whatever. But yeah, so all these guys now have sort of an added thing, but uh, it's not really going to make a difference for the the big guys like Judge and, and Turner. To right, come. right. And I honestly think the the ones that will be stayed away from for the qual- like for the draft pick compensation is from this list is realistically just Yovaldi. Like the rest of those guys, even Bassett really, like Bassett still – was pretty i want to say he was pretty good last year um but yeah like yeah he was pretty good also yeah, another well, reason that guys can't get the qualifying offers if they were traded mid-season right um a couple of these guys i feel like are honestly going to move pretty quick once free agency's actually uh wait, once, yeah once one of them is already point. signed absolutely we'll i there. think i think the next one uh, is actually going to sign with toronto blue jays i think it's going to be brandon nemo um Personally, if we have to make that prediction, so that if that becomes a thing, that's going to be one of mine. Um, but anyway, the Tampa Bay Rays have made a trio of trades. Xavier Edwards, he was one of their former top prospects, I believe. And yeah, JT, that was, yeah. How do you pronounce his last name, Jay? J.T. what? Chargois. Chargois. I wanted to say that, but I know if I was right. J.T. Chargois to the Marlins for Santiago Suarez and Marcus Johnson. Um, what is this? I don't know. It's weird. Uh, JT Cachargua had a pretty solid season out of the bullpen. So the Marlins are picking up another bullpen guy. But it's weird to see Xavier Edwards go. I'm pulling up prospect rankings right now to double check that he's not still ranked. I think he fell off a little. He's like a speed guy. He was traded to Tampa Bay from the Padres. I'm pretty sure in the Blake Snell deal. So that was sort of a big deal. He's not a guy with a lot of power and he's really fast. Uh, this last season, he didn't play much. He had, I mean, he had a career high 400 plate appearances for a level, but he had an 84 WRC plus and stole only seven bases. So I don't know what happened to his speed, but he was batting like 300 every single year before that, like easily, and was stealing a lot of bases. So I don't know what's going on there. Let's see what MLB Pipeline says of Tampa Bay Rays prospects. Xavier Edwards is. Oh, well, he's not even on the team anymore, so that makes sense. Um, I'm an idiot. What team is he on now? Marlins. Marlins. Sorry. This is just Anyway, we can talk content. about some of the some of that return. Marcus Johnson, uh, 
you know, former Duke baseball player. He is from Whittier, mm-hmm. California. That's uh, is that near where you're from, Jake? No, that's in LA. I I toured the college down there. Oh really? Uh, how many strikeouts do you think he got last year when he was in the minors? Is he a pitcher or a hitter? Pitcher. Pitcher. How many innings? Sixteen. Two thirds. I'm going to say, I don't know if he got a lot or a little. Um, 30. 29. Oh. How many walks? I was going to guess like three. <laughs> How many walks? Uh, walks. Ooh, ooh, 23. 11. Oh, that's, in, that's pretty solid. Uh, that's Not a lot of bad. walks in that few innings. But Yeah, 12, yeah, I mean, 12 hits, 11 walks walk. surrendered in that time. He gave 11 runs, though. Yeah, well, it seems like the Rays yeah. should be able to do something with him. I don't know anything about Santiago Suarez. Uh, neither. Santiago Suarez, right there. No way, he was born in two thousand five. What the frick? This man, seventeen oh, years that. old, thirty nine innings pitched in the Dominican Summer League, two point three one ERA. That's pretty solid. And That's Xavier good. Edwards is now the sixteenth prospect in the Marlins system. So it, it's a. <clears throat> It's a pretty interesting oh, trade. It's not Xavier super Edwards. crazy. Xavier yeah, yeah. Edwards, long term replacement for John Birdie. That's a that's a good yeah, that's a seems like a good comp. He's really he is very fast. So that's 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 pretty good. JT Chargois had a two point four two ERA this past season across twenty two innings. So <laughs> um I don't I don't think this is going to be a move in mountains, but it's definitely an interesting trade that like it's one of those where like 10 years from now, you're just like, you're looking at all these players and you're like, wait, these guys were in that trade together. Oh my God. The Rays got a steal. Like Santiago Suarez and Marcus Johnson are like incredible relievers or whatever in a few years. And Xavier Edwards flamed out or whatever. And JT Chargois is like 40 years old. So it's, it's one of those. Yeah. It's a, one of those trade. Uh, yeah. Another trade. Brett wisely goes to the giants in exchange for Tristan Peters. Um, I don't still, these names are, I just don't know anything about. <laughs> Brett, well, yeah, they're, they're very, they're very low level guys. Uh, Brett yeah. Wisely hit 15 home runs and stole 31 bases at double Brilliant. A this past season with a 121 WRC plus. He is a middle infielder. And then Tristan Peters. I feel like I heard that name, but I could be lying to you. I wouldn't purposefully lie to you. He reached double A. With the Giants, oh, I remember because he was part of a trade or, or like the Brewers let him go and then the Giants picked him up. I feel like we talked about this to be honest. Um, he batted, he had a 141 WRC plus with the Brewers and then with the Giants at double A, he had a 71 WRC plus. So I, I, he was part of some trade. I can't remember which one it was, but he came over to the Giants and the Giants just immediately traded him away. I guess they didn't like him, but he's an outfielder. We'll see what the Rays can do. And then one more trade that the Rays made. The big one. Oh, yeah. It was uh, Miles Mastrobuoni. He's like a super utility guy. Goes to the Chicago Cubs for Alfredo Zaraga. I think I think Zaraga is a pitching prospect. I don't know how to spell master bait. What? Mastrobuoni. Yeah. Uh, master boner. Alfredo Zaraga is a uh, high A Pitching prospect, he's high A, and he's 22. Um, yeah, M- Master Boney's about to be 27, so it's a weird one. He's like a super utility guy. Um, basically, I imagine that he's going to probably end up taking away from – they got like Zach McKinstry last year at the deadline. He's like a that kind of player. He's um, the next Ben Zobrist. Yeah, he – I saw a scouting report about him that um, it was like he can play a lot of positions, just he doesn't play any of them very well. Um, He's a raise prospect, so he's more like a contact-focused hitter, and he walks a lot uh, and doesn't have a whole lot of power. That's pretty much his whole this whole deal should be interesting he's got a cool name usually like you just hear a guy's name and you're like that guy's gonna be a baseball player and that seems like one of them where he's just got like that weird name that everyone's gonna he's gonna be something like when reese hoskins came up i was like that guy's gonna be a baseball player yep 
another move that they made um, that was a bigger move for the Rays side. I know they did not pick up um, Kevin Kiermaier's option. They also, I think they designated Ryan Yarbrough for a sign. Mm-hmm. Correct. Um, so the Rays are making a lot of moves to kind of clear some space mm-hmm. and roster crunch, like you said earlier. Because it, it's like the, it's the Rule 5 is coming up, so you got to like – Protect you guys up to protect them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, moving on. The Los Angeles Angels signed uh, Tyler Anderson, who doesn't have to go very far um, as he's leaving the Los Angeles Dodgers to go to the Angels. Three years, 39 million. Uh, very quietly, very productive last year. Yeah. 178 and two thirds innings pitch with a 2.57 ERA. He's not a big strikeout guy. He's sort of like a innings muncher type guy. And he mm-hmm. really thrived with the Dodgers, which is a very common theme with that team. But it, it's, it's a weird path that Tyler Anderson has taken throughout his career. He was the 20th overall pick in 2011 by the Rockies, which is basically a death sentence for any pitcher. So like he had very high uh, potential when he was drafted, but then he went to the worst place you can go as a pitcher. And he really struggled as anybody else would as a pitcher in Colorado. He had a pretty solid rookie season, but from there it was really bad. And then he went to the giants and then the, the pirates and the Mariners for 2021. And then he really broke out this past year, but he's always been a guy that can eat innings because he doesn't like throw super hard. He's one of those soft tossing lefties with a weird wind up, but I think this is sort of what the angels need is like not somebody that's going to blow your socks off, but just somebody that's going to eat innings. Cause they just always seem to struggle to just find anybody that can like not be terrible. Uh, yeah. I just, the, the angels are going to, they could take Jacob DeGrom and make him a bum. So like I, this, this signing on paper, decent. They need guys that do what Tyler Anderson does, but I have absolutely zero faith that the Angels do anything right. So hard to judge is what I would say. No, Aaron Judge is still a free agent. Not for long. Oh. He's going to sign with the Giants tomorrow, probably. Bro, uh, no, he's not, but that would be sick. I really do think he's going to end up a Giant. I really hope we do. All right, we'll save that for prediction prediction um, episode, though. Another big signing. Um, the Yankees re-signed Anthony Rizzo for two years, $34 million. He's a $17 million club option in 2025 with a $6 million buyout, which the Yankees are most likely going to accept because at that point, they're not going to be competing for anything. Um, Anthony Rizzo said he liked being a Yankee, so he re-signed. He's a Yankee. Yeah, he's just one of the most consistently very solid players in baseball. He had 32 home runs for the fourth time in his career. That's his career high. It just seems like he just he cannot hit more than thirty two. I think next year if he plays more than his one hundred thirty games, which is which is his career low for like a full season once he became a full time player, then he probably surpasses that. But yeah, he's uh he's a great clubhouse presence, I'm sure. And he's he's really good probably with the younger players as well. And the Yankees are gonna have a lot of those coming up in due time. And I, I think he's just really solid. He fits so well in that with that short porch and in right field in Yankee stadium. And if he has a little better luck than the two sixteen Babbitt he had this past year, which is incredible. He's just hitting everything in the air. We'll, we'll see uh, maybe with the, the shift, he has some more luck in that department, but yeah, he's a, a really solid player all around, even fielding too, a little less. So this year, but yeah, I think that's a, a very solid contract for him the the man's getting paid again he's still gonna be going to his age 33 season so he's probably still got a lot left but yeah i think the the yankees did well there yeah i agree even though it sucks to have uh anthony rizzo still on the yankees um another move that was kind of a head scratcher to see is the guardians trading former top prospect um nolan jones to the colorado rockies in exchange for juan brito um and this is such a weird trade, but then you look at like, I thought this was awful for the guardians because they're getting rid of Nolan Jones and it didn't make any sense that they're trading an infield prospect when they supposedly have like this major influx of infield prospect talent. Um, and they're trading 
for Juan Brito, who literally plays like the same positions. He's just another infield prospect. When you look at Juan Brito, and he is he has Guardians stapled all over him. <laughs> he is he is an infield. Oh, he doesn't strike out. He doesn't doesn't strike out. Infield hitter. Switch. Switch hitter. And he's switch hitter. He's an in, he's a Guardians prospect all the way. Um I see he, it. He uh he walked more than he struck out. Yeah, I like yeah. him already. Um, yeah, last but yeah, year like, in, uh, in low A, he was very good. He's just still, he's still just twenty, but he hit two eighty six, four hundred seven, four seventy. Uh, walked more than he struck out. Nolan Jones is a guy with colossal power. Everyone's kind of known that he's going to hit a couple five hundred foot home runs at, at course, um, and could still end up being really good. But you're banking on the Rockies actually developing a hitting. A hitting talent that's not named Nolan Arenado, so that's probably out the window. Um, yeah, I I imagine that if they because this is a weird trade too because they traded for Brito and they selected the contract of Juan Brito, so they already got him. You know, yeah, he's going to be on. He's on that forty man. So I, this is a weird one because it sucks for them to lose Nolan Jones. I from what the looks of it, Brito looks pretty sick. I gotta say. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this was pretty cool. They also made another um, minor trade. I know this is not on the rundown, but they ended up trading um, another prospect of theirs, Carlos Vargas, to um, to Arizona for Ross Carver, who's a pitching. Uh, I think he's a pitcher. I don't but, know what you're saying to me. I don't know those names. You're saying come on. words at me. You made the rundown. You made. The uh, rundown. You just said that wasn't in the rundown. I know they traded Carlos Vargas though. Yeah, I don't know who that is. You're not versed I, I on don't your know, Guardians. I don't baseball. know anything about baseball. But yeah, like, like you said, it, weird trade in the fact that they have so many like middle infield prospects that Nolan Jones was actually playing outfield this past year and they like need outfielders more than anything. So it, it's sort of weird in that department, but you know, maybe they're just loading up on middle infielders so that they go trade for like Brian Reynolds or something like so that. Too. But that, that's the only thing that makes sense. Like you said, Brito seems like a pretty sick player. It does seem like a guy that fits well with their uh, philosophy in terms of hitting. And I think Nolan Jones, I, I, I'm i just matching everything that you said. I, Nolan Jones could go crazy in Colorado, but also it's the freaking Rockies. So they're probably just going to turn him into something terrible, but at least he'll be fun. He'll probably hit one 500 feet. I'm excited to, to watch him. That's a guy that I'm going to be like watching in terms of fantasy, more of a roto guy strikes out 33% of the time. That's probably why they thought they could let him go, but he was a top 100 prospect this past year. So it's definitely, definitely an interesting trade. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if the guardians do something else after this, or if this is just like them, just continually pulling in all these middle infielders, or if, and if the the Rockies can turn Jones into a legitimate hitter, yeah. Um, I saw a tweet just now, like trying to find more information on it, uh, and this is from a Rockies fan, and it made me laugh. And it's uh, Nolan Jones is a potentially really good fit for course because of his his really smooth left handed swing, which means that he will be a ground ball hitter, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is like so so true. Um, uh, one more big move to talk about, and it's like the biggest trade that's happened so far. And it's mm-hmm. the Blue Jays trading Teoscar Hernandez to the Seattle Mariners uh, in exchange for, he was one of their top five prospects, I want to say, Eric Swanson and Adam Macko. Um, this was a head scratcher at first, but I have like a, I have a, a theory on why they're doing this. But yeah, Teoscar Hernandez really good like, like the last couple of seasons and now he's going to be playing for the upstart plucky young upstart Seattle Mariners. I know Teoscar is such like a fun player too. He's, mm-hmm. he was like such a great fit with the, the blue Jays. He seemed to like be such great friends with all the guys over there that it sort of sucks that he's gone, but like he only had one more year of control and if they're going to get anything out of him, I guess he might as well get something. But yeah, Teoscar has been really good the past two years cutting down his strikeout rate it sort of jumped back up this past year but it's still below what his career rate was he's he's a guy who like has some speed he's got 30 home run power he can bat like 270 and above he's got he's like a 130 wrc plus guy i think he's a really good hitter he seemed to enjoy playing with the the blue jays so yeah it's really sad to see him go but like i don't know the mariners are really putting together a hell of a team to be honest and i it sort of makes you wonder 
what they're going to do with Kelnick, what they're going to do with Jesse Winker. I mean, I think Mitch Hanniger is a free agent, um, I, sort of. I think so. Yeah. So, I mean, it could work if you have like Winker DH and then you have like Teoscar, Kelnick, and Julio out there. But it does seem like, oh, um, there might be like an odd man out there if you like don't want to be spending so much money on your outfield or just have like everything concentrated in the outfield. But this does seem like either setting up the Mariners for further moves or just like, you know, just stacking the team offensively in the outfield. Pretty sick. Swanson is not a prospect though. Yeah. I, I got the two mixed up. Adam Macca is actually one of the top prospects. He's in the top 10 now. Um, he's in the top 10 now in the Blue Jays system. Uh-huh. Number eight. Swanson exactly. though, one of the best relievers in baseball this past season yeah. and definitely one of the most unknown best relievers in baseball this past season, a 1.68 ERA along with a 1.85 FIP across 53 innings. The guy also struck out 34% of batters. He was incredible. He didn't walk anyone. That uh, was one of my favorite things. His walk to strikeout ratio is incredible. He doesn't walk anybody. He strikes out a ton of guys and he was really good. It's hard to tell if it's a product of being on the Mariners and they're really good with their relievers. But the Blue Jays really need some relief pitching, and I, I yes. think that's like all you can get out of it. And they'll have a lot of control over Swanson, who won't be a free agent until 2026, so they get three more years of control over him and a prospect who's in their top ten, like you said. So I think it makes somewhat sense. But like the way that Teoscar fit on that team, I don't know. I mean, maybe they just are looking for a, a guy that can be more of a leadoff hitter there. I think Springer's really good in that position. So, I yeah, it's hard to be like oh the blue jays made a smart move here when they traded one of the best players on their team well they okay so my my thought process behind this is they traded to oscar hernandez they desperately needed help in the bullpen everyone in that pen last year not named jordan romano and adam simber were terrible um pretty much so swanson could potentially come in and be one of their biggest like high leverage relievers uh Mako is like a weird prospect because he's a pitching prospect um left-handed pitcher uh, he's if you look at him if you look at his picture he's he's really tall and he's built like a rail apparently when they drafted him i was literally reading the profile they drafted him he's 150 pounds um now he's 170 six feet tall lighter than i am yeah he actually they said in the thing that he had bulked up to 205 at one point um oh but he's gone up a lot in velocity i think uh the blue jays one of the biggest things that they desperately needed last year was literally any power from a left-handed hitter um, they had absolutely no production out of anyone that was lefty last year. They even traded for Rymel Tapia and Tapia, like when he got at bats, just, he did the Tapia thing where he just hit ground balls and was useless. Um, I think they're going to be chasing a guy most likely like Brandon Nimmo to play left field. Um, and I think Nimmo would be a perfect fit for that offense because he walks at an insanely high clip for that offense that just hits constantly. Um, and he gives you a lot of contact and power from the left-handed side. So I think that's like a match made in heaven. Um, There were talks, I sent you a tweet earlier that you could expect them to potentially try to trade for like a Dylan Carlson or for like a Lars Newt bar or something like that. I honestly don't think so. I really think they're most likely going to be chasing someone like Nemo. um, And I think that would make the most sense for them, but uh, getting what they can get for Teoscar Hernandez. I honestly, I still don't know if that's what I would have done. Um, I think I probably would have kept Tay Oscar, but you know, whatever. I'm should not. I'm not that, running the baseball. Should have traded that bum Robbie Ray. What? Oh wait, is he even on the team? I'm an idiot. He's on the. He's Mariners. on the Mariners. Should have traded that bum Vlad Jr. What the heck? He can't even win trade an MVP. Oh my god. Trade that. Trade that bum to the Chicago Cubs to teach him a lesson. <laughs> Trade him to the Rockies. Don't do that. <laughs> no, that would be sick. What do you mean don't do that? That'd be don't awesome. That. He'd go back to it and grab balls. No, that is true. That is also true. <laughs> That's all the transactions we have to talk about. Let's go to the uh, BBWA award winners that we talked about last week. The winners got announced. Uh, managers of the year, starting with the AL. Well, hey, I said this one. Uh, Terry Francona won this one. Goal. Good job, Davis. Shout I, out to Terry. He's the good. This is, this is Sean in the dark for all of these. I, I This is like the stupidest award in baseball. I, it's the stupidest award in all the sports, more so in baseball where the managers have like no control over 
basically anything other than switching the pitchers out. So, yeah, sure. Yeah. Terry wins this one over Brandon Hyde, Scott Service, Dusty Baker, Aaron Boone, Kevin Cash. He beat Terry or he beat Brandon Hyde pretty handily. He had 17 first place votes to Hyde's nine. So, <clears throat> seems like Terry Fancona was the clear guy here. I thought it was going to be Scott Service. Yeah. I thought he Scott had Service one first place second. vote. He had one well, first place vote. Nobody even. Yeah, really weird. I, the first time the Mar- Mariners have made the playoffs since freaking 2001, and they just like, eh. yeah, but they had a really talented roster on paper, and everyone kind of thought the Guardians were like were dumb and garbage, um, and they ended up winning that division too. Like mm-hmm. the Mariners broke a playoff drought, but they also got in as a wild card. The Guardians won their division with a team that everyone was like, yeah, this team is probably going to be one of the worst ones in baseball. Um, Yeah, no, I think Francona is very deserving. Apparently, this is the third time in his career that he's won the award. Yeah, and on the NL side, um, I don't remember if I said this one. I think I might have said this one. Buck Showalter ended up winning this one, although it probably should have been Brian Snitker because Buck Showalter um, literally literally blew the – well, he didn't do it, but him and his team uh, did their best to blow a lead and throw that division away to the Atlanta Braves. So, um, but Buck Showalter, congratulations. He wins this one. Uh, this one was also kind of a toss up, but still. It's pretty crazy that a, a non division winner manager won the award. I, I feel like I, know. I don't have the stats on that, but that's probably not happened too many times. Um, I don't know. How many times Showalter has won this award? I feel like he had to have won it before. But he beat out Dave Roberts, Brian Snitker, Oliver Marmol, Rob Thompson, and Bob Melvin. Uh, Dave Roberts had the same amount of first four place votes. Other times. He's won four other times. He's and he okay. So he's won he's won four other times in four different decades with four different teams. Oh, that's a Hall of Famer right there. And they're all in the NL. He's this act, actual fourth NL manager of the year. He, did he win one with the Orioles? I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, but he had the same amount of first place votes as Dave Roberts, but he still beat him out by 20 points. Roberts and Snicker were basically head to head, and then Showalter sort of ran away with it. I, I don't know why. He had such a stacked roster. I guess they just had lower expectations than the Dodgers and, Bra- and Braves, but I don't know. That's very cool. weird. Yeah, there's a weird voting results there. I mean, Dave Roberts, his team sucks. He probably should have won, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. Brian Snicker, the, like, the, his team won the division, and, like, they're, they've got, like, the the expectations of having won the World Series last year. So, I, I don't know. Maybe he deserved it more. It's a weird. Uh, good for Buck. Yep. Congratulations to Buck. Um. <sighs> No, he's actually – ESPN posted this tweet that's actually wrong. Um, he has three AL Manager of the Year awards, and he has one NL Manager of the Year award now. Okay. Um, so that is wrong. Fix that, ESPN. Um, on to Rookie of the Year. I think this one was pretty clear-cut, even though we tried to make arguments other ways. Um, AL Rookie of the Year is Julio Rodriguez. I think everyone saw this coming a mile away. Um, any, th- any thoughts to add to this one? Um, no, this was like exactly how we predicted it. The only thing I do have to say is that I was talking to one of my friends that played uh, a lot of baseball in high school and he said he played travel ball with Steven Kwan. That's pretty dope. That's sick. I was like, holy shit. This, this guy was like my roommate in, in at Sonoma state before I failed out. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty sick. I was like, Oh, what? That's sick. Cause he like posted a story about Mark Mathias. I don't know if you know who that is. Brewers, so. Brewers guy. I think he's on the Rangers now or something. And I was just like, oh, damn, like, do you know Mark Mathias? And he was like, yeah, he's the boy. Like, I played with him. And then I was like, oh, what? That's sick. And then he was like, yeah, I also played with Stephen Kwan. He's up for Rookie of the Year. And I was just like, yeah, he is. Stephen Kwan's the boy. That's crazy. Um, But, yeah, I think this is pretty pretty obvious he was going to win this one. Oh NL, the, NL was a little bit worse for some reason. I don't know. NL was more split. Um, although Michael Harris ended up coming away, winning this one. Um, I think the only other argument with this one was him or Spencer Strider. I thought it was going to be closer and it was not I'm t- national league. Uh, I'll go back to the American league results after we hit this, but I thought it would be like 
because I mean, this I thought it was one of the closest races of all time. There, like they were both equally so good. Shredder was so dominant on the mound. Harris was so great in the outfield and at the plate. But 22 first place votes for Harris to Shredder's eight. That's like a 31 point difference in in the amount of points they got. Uh, that's that's crazy. Uh, I mean, they they both had all the first and second place votes. But yeah, I mean, that's wild. And Jake McCarthy, Alexis Diaz, Nick Lodolo, Neil Cruz also got some votes after Brian Brandon Donovan, but. That's that's crazy. I thought it would be a lot closer, and it was not. This is my first time looking at the results, but yeah. So what are the results for the AL? We predicted the Harris, by the way. Um, we predicted both. Yeah. Of them. But uh, yeah, for the AL, Julio had 29 first place votes. So he had 29 of the 30 first place votes. Who was the one? Adley. Adley got one first place vote. That makes sense. Stephen Kwan had uh, 10 second place votes. His 44 points. He finished third by pretty solid margin behind Adley. Julio sort of ran away with it. I know he predicted that. We both said Quan should have finished better. Bobby Witt Jr., Jeremy Pena, and George Kirby also got some votes as well. So uh, pretty dope rookie class, to be honest, in, in general. I, I think if I had to rate the rookie class in terms of American League and National League, I'd give it like a pretty solid like B plus, A minus. Yeah. It's a pretty- good group. Pretty good group of dudes. Yeah. I'd let him date my daughter. <laughs> I don't have one. So, <laughs> me neither. Me neither. Uh, onto the Cy Young. This one was like so obvious. So, we've had some sick. Stiff. sick. Yeah. Um, both of these actually ended up winning unanimously, which I don't know if that's the first time it's ever happened, but it's pretty interesting. I just, I just saw that. I, I had a, a notification from mlb.com pulling it up right now literally the question was both of them won unanimously how rare is that um but you can talk while i read it <laughs> okay so uh your al Cy young winner is justin verlander i think basically every single person saw this he is now the 11th pitcher to win his third Cy young now um yeah i mean jv he's he's really good at baseball who would have thought who? Justin Verlander? Justin Verlander, yeah. I thought he was pretty good. I thought he was just good at getting a hot girlfriend. It's his wife now, man. I know, that was the joke. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Justin Verlander ran away with it. Thirty first place votes. He beat out Dylan Cease and Alec Manoa, who are the other finalists. They finished second and third respectively. Shohei finished fourth, Fromber fifth, which is pretty crazy. He's the first guy, uh second guy ever not to win the Cy Young after the amount of quality starts that he had in a row, which is pretty crazy. McClanahan finished one, two, three, four, five, six, which is crazy considering his first half. Do you remember when it was like, oh, Shane McClanahan's the best pitcher in the fucking, oh, excuse me, in the world? Um, it's like the fifth time you swear, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop myself. It, nobody's watching. That's a, no, that's a degenerate. <laughs> Shane McClanahan had an incredible first half. It's crazy that he ended up finishing six. But yeah, then Shane Bieber, Nestor Cortez, Garrett Cole, and Kevin Gaussman round out the rest of that top 10 but yeah pretty incredible so i've got here you want to hear the, you want to hear a cool factoid okay well you know I'll, I'll say i'll save it after until we talk about it after the next guy actually okay you guys. um it says verlander is only one of 10 people that have won the cy young award three times joining Roger Clemens, Randy Johnson, Steve Carlton, Greg Maddox, Clayton, Clayton Kershaw, Koufax, Pedro Martinez, Jim Palmer, Max Scherzer, Tom Seaver. So ju- just some of the best pitchers of all time. He's also the fifth oldest pitcher to win the Cy Young behind uh, Roger Clemens, Gaylord Perry, early win, and Roger Clemens a different time. Uh, but yeah, I, it's pretty crazy just the story of Verlander winning it unanimously at the age of 39 after missing two years with Tommy John surgery. Like wow. that's a that's a crazy story right i mean and he was might have had his best season of his career 1.75 era 0.83 whip had a ton of wins too i don't know why i'm struggling so much to find out if this is the first time we've had two unanimous winners but why don't you go and talk about the nl guy uh the nl guy is a uh, jake jake Kumpler's favorite player uh of all time that's ever played baseball um if you ever if you ever watch the podcast it is uh sandy alcantara of the my boy of the miami marlins uh, yeah, he was by far and away. <laughs> like he was, this was as unanimous as unanimous could get. He trashed every single other, every single other person that was on the list. He completely ran away with it. Um, it's most things. 
Six Can you get games. more unanimous than unanimous? Oh, yeah. Super duper, uh, unbelievable unanimous. They gave and, that uh, to him? Oh, yeah. I, they did. Um, what? He had 30, 32 games started, 228 innings pitched, uh, <laughs> pitched to six complete games. That's pretty good. Um, that just doesn't happen crazy. anymore. No, uh, do, you want, do you want to hear a cool factoid now that I got both of them? Yes, I do. All right. So, uh, Sandy Alcantara. Pitch 228 innings. ERA 2.28. Justin That's... Verlander. Justin Verlander. No way. 175 innings, 1.75 ERA. I love that. That's such a stupid stat, but I love it. That's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah. Well, Sandy ran away with this. I predicted it before the season started that Sandy would win Cy Young. So I, I got that going for me. I I, I knew this was going to be his year. So he had all the first place votes. Max Fried finished second and Julio Urias finished third. Aaron Nola, Zach Gallen round out the top five. And then it was Rodon, Corbin Burns, Hugh Darvish, Edwin Diaz, Kyle Wright, Logan Webb for some reason, my boy, and Ryan Helsley. Logan Webb's dad follows me on Twitter. So shout out Eric. Um, Eric <laughs> other than yeah exactly other than that is uh pretty clear i mean that's dope like we said both of them were unanimous i did find the part where it says that this marked just the second time in baseball history that both winners of the cy young award were unanimous Sandy the Alcantara. only other time yeah. the only other time was in the year of the pitcher when the american leagues denny mclean and the national leagues oh god Year of the Pitcher, 1968. Oh, it was Bob Gibson. Bob Gibson. Yeah, Denny McLean and Bob Gibson were the only other time that both Cy Young Award winners were unanimous in the same year. So this is a pretty big deal, to be honest. Second time ever. Sandy Alcantara is also the first Marlins pitcher that has ever won the Cy Young. So Yes, he is. Lots of cool, cool milestones for Sandy there. He really was just an absolute machine this year. Oh, um, boy fully expect him to do it next year he just he throws hard he throws hard deep into games he throws more innings than any other starter uh he's just that guy is nails he's everything you want out of a starting pitcher so congratulations to sandy um what a guy yes thank you for making me look like a genius i appreciate it Stop the doing stuff that makes Jake brag, Sandy. I'm tired of Jake. <laughs> His ego is getting too big. Dude's head, dude's head's just blowing up like a balloon. Yeah. No, bro. That's that's this uh, condition I have. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for <laughs> sorry, <Rick>, but, you... <laughs> but yeah, that's uh really cool. Do you want to do the? Uh, do you want to do the breakouts? Yeah, I, I say we do because if not, then we're just going to keep putting, trying to put it at the end of a podcast. And so, I don't know, let's just do it. 15 minutes. Do a timer. Yeah. Oh, my God. I just. All right. Well, okay. Oh, here we go. Me to this. Yeah. So, I, I did. <clears throat> I wrote an article last year. Looks like it was in. Doesn't have dates. Thanks, Athletes Hub. I don't know when I wrote it. I wrote it sometime. Um, but it's the. I did buy or sell 2021 offensive breakout. So I basically went through all the guys that increased their 2021, that increased their 2021 WRC plus 35% better than their career average. And then had a 25% better WRC plus than their career best. So I, I just had to put in some things to get a criteria so that we could have legitimate breakouts, but yeah. So that, that created a list of like eight guys or so. And then I went through and tried to decide whether or not they were going to be able to keep this up. The first guy that I went through was Frank Schwindel of the Chicago Cubs. He had a 152 WRC plus in 2021. I said he would probably still be pretty dang good because of his combination of low strikeout percentage and high max exit velocity that made him pretty put him in, in pretty good standing amongst the other guys that, that had the levels that he reached there. But so I had him as a buy. I had his best case scenario as 2021 Nelson Cruz and his worst case scenario as 2021 Michael Franco. And it was closer to Michael Franco. Michael Franco in 2021 had a 62 WRC plus. Schwindel in 2022 had a 78 WRC plus. So, uh, yeah. He plays Mexico I, I, now. <laughs> that's, that's all you need to know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we love we will both always love Frank Schwindel. He was he's a one year wonder. This is one of those guys that like 
Oh, remember Frank Schwindel? Remember that one year where he did half a year where he was crazy? It was the uh, it was the one guy that was the one Cubs All Star. Oh uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Well, way back in the day. Yeah. In the two thousands. I don't know the name. I'll find him. Like it's Mark not, or something. Not, yeah, it was like Mark some. Uh yeah. <laughs> he was an all-star the one year and then he like never played baseball again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He had that crazy first half and then just was terrible. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I thought Schwindel could hit like 260 and hit like 25 home runs and he hit 230 with eight home runs and you know fell off one of the worst teams in the league. So <clears throat> got that one wrong. Definitely will have to learn from my mistakes from trusting breakouts like this. This is gonna be the next um who's the guy this year? Um Who's the oh, guy in the um, Nationals? Joey Manessis. Yeah. Uh, Joey Manessis wouldn't qualify for my list because he didn't play in the majors before this year. Or maybe he did, and he will qualify for my list this offseason. But, yeah, <clears throat> I'll learn from my lesson that, like, these these one few-month wonders are, are really hard to continue. But, yeah, uh, got that one wrong. Definitely was close to Mike Alfranco. So let's move on to the next one. This one's pretty interesting. It was Byron Buxton. Byron Buxton had a 169 WRC plus in 2021. I said that he would fall off. I said I, I sold that breakout because I think he just gets injured too much. And, uh, you know, like he's, he's just not going to be at that level for enough time. And he didn't get injured too much, but he was not at the level that he was in 2021. I had best case, best case scenario is like Fernando Tatis because he's just crazy like that. And then worst case scenario, Austin Slater. I got to pull up these two, but I know Buxton didn't have the type of year that he had the year before his WRC plus fell all the way to 136 from 171. If you recall, well, 169, that's weird. It's like his WRC plus changed. Um, nonetheless, 136 WRC plus is still really good. And he played only 92 games. So that was basically what I said. It was, he's not going to play enough. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know how you how you rate this one. I would call this um I would call this a miss just because he still had a very solid season. Um but he did get hurt. So like I think this one's this one's still a 50-50. Yeah. Not, so neither I, I was win somewhat right. Loss. I was somewhat right, but it, it's sort of rough to call him a sell on the breakout. Like, I think the skills are there. I think the skills have always been there, but, you know, you, you can glass really bones and paper skin. It's just kind of exactly. Hard. But and then held together by massive muscles. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, he still hit 28 home runs. He only batted 224. That's because he had a 244 BABIP somehow. But yeah, he's uh, I, I think he's like just one of the most interesting players that in our, in our game, just with his skill set and the the way that he just like has the inability to stay, stay healthy this, this past year, he tied hit the second most games of his career and it was 92. So I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but yeah, he's a very good hitter. He's really fast, but just can't stay healthy. We'll move oh, on yeah. to the next one, which might be the most controversial, definitely at the time, was Cedric Mullins, who was probably the biggest breakout of 2021. He had a 136 WRC plus after being basically an unknown guy because he started to that only left-handed. But looking at his X stats, he really outperformed and he was sort of getting lucky. And then with the outfield changing this year, I wasn't really sure how that was going to go. I gave it a sell because I thought, you know, his average is going to drop off like 40 points or whatever because he batted 300. And I don't think he's going to have the same sort of power. And I don't know, I was sort of right. Like he's still good this year, but his WRC plus fell 30 points down to 106. He did bat 260, like I said, and then his power fell off. He had 30 home runs last year. He had 16 this year. He still stole bases, but this is like exactly what I expect, expected. Yeah, pretty much. I think this one was pretty spot on. Because I said worst case scenario, 2021, Jonathan VR, VR that year, 105 WRC plus 18 home runs. That's literally like exactly what Mullins did. At a 106 and 8, 16 home run. So, like, I don't know, that seemed pretty right. I think I had that one. And I think that was a very controversial one at the time. And I felt sort of stupid by it. Like, he's still good in fantasy because he stole 34 bases. But other than that, like, he did exactly what I expected him to do, which is he's still very good, but not the, the 2021 breakout where he was like a 30 30 guy that batted 290. Oh, yeah. 
So that one's that one's a pretty good one. This one was probably the easiest one. The next one is Rafael Ortega of the Cubs. He had a 120 WRC plus in 2021, which was like a huge jump from whatever he had done before. His career WRC plus before that was 59, which is awful. So that was like the easiest sell of all time. I don't even know. Did he even freaking play this year? He did. He was just not good. Yeah. Let's see. It says he had a 96 WRC plus. He did basically exactly what I thought he would do and just be pretty met like he has been the entirety of his career. He batted 241 with seven dingers. He still sold 12 bases. So he got that speed for you roto freaks out there. But yeah, I mean, this is uh, that was probably one of the, the easiest one to pick out. He was just a, like a guy that pulls pulls the ball in the air a lot. And it's hard to uh, keep a, a 290 average when you do that. Oh, yeah. And then this one is on his Vladimir Guerrero Jr. was the next one. We're getting close to the end. Actually, I think we're halfway. Um, <laughs> nonetheless, I think Vladdy was a, a is sort of the opposite of Ortega in that it's like, oh, well, of course, like this is Vladdy. Like he's huge prospect. Like this is what we've been expecting from him for, for years. And then he finally did what we were expecting. And but. I don't know. He sort of fell off because I did a buy. I was just like, nah, this guy's super, super talented. Like, I feel like worst case scenario, he's like 2021 Giancarlo, which is what he was. But a buy for a guy that reaches like his worst case scenario when he batted 275 with 32 homers this year is like, I don't know. I think I got that one wrong. I think Vladdy sort of fell off. He had kind of a down year for sure. Um, in a year that the Blue Jays honestly kind of struggled to live up to expectations. Um, but yeah, I. I don't know what happened is the thing with Vlad. He just started hitting the ball on the ground again. Yeah. Stop. Ground ball percentage rose 8%. Yeah, that's all of it. That explains everything. He just started hitting the ball on the ground, which like that was the big thing that held him back before 2021 when he finally broke out. And then he just reverted back again. So, I mean, he's really going to have to continue to work on getting the ball in the air if he's going to get back to that. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I didn't see – I just thought like – I don't know, like with Justin Turner and Chris Taylor and stuff, like they didn't revert back to like hitting the ball on the ground a bunch. Like they've been good the rest of their career since overcoming that. So I, th- I thought like Vladdy entering his age 23 season would continue that. He was still really good this year, 132 w- WRC plus, but that's 34 points off of what he did last year. So it's a big drop off. Yeah. Next one, very similar to Byron Buxton, Luis Robert of the White Sox. He had a 157 WRC plus last year. I did a buy. Uh, I It's basically the same thing as Vladdy, where it's just like he's so good. He's like got so much potential. He's been a big prospect. This is what we've been expecting from him. And he was not able to live up to that potential because he was injured the whole year. He has not played a full season yet. We're still waiting on that to come. I still think he's like the next Ronald Acuna, which is what I had his best case scenario as last year. And he was sort of pretty mad last year. 111 WRC plus with a 284 average and 12 homers across 98 games. I think it would be a lot easier to tell if he played the whole season. I think he's got really good potential still, but this is another case of, of, Byron Buxton syndrome where he just cannot stay healthy. Oh yeah. Um, I think this is, this was a, should have been a major sell. Luis Robert has not stayed healthy really at all. Um, his whole career. And when he has like, he's been good. It's just, you have to get the flashes out of him that actually make him look good amidst him being hurt. And it's difficult to tell now too, because he really did he battled a wrist injury all last year. And I hate trying to like give an excuse for a white Sox player because I really just don't care. Um, but like, yeah, I think, um, I think this is another one where you're going to have to try to give this another year pause. Yeah. I think he, I think he's got all the potential in the world. He's got a super high ceiling just like Buxton, but like he needs to stay healthy to, to reach that potential. All right. Next one. Uh, this was one of the ones that I felt the most confident in out of all of my picks. Uh, for sure. Tyler O'Neill 
had a breakout season last year, 144 WRC plus with the Cardinals. And I was like, this man struck out 31% of the time. There is no way he bats 286 with 34 home runs. And he did not. He still showed that power speed combo across 96 games with 14 home runs and 14 steals, but he had a 101 WRC plus. He did cut his strikeout rate a lot. So like that was like the one thing that was going to make me look stupid is he cuts his strikeout rate and then actually is good. But he was not only injured this year, but also was just not that great. 101 WRC plus is league average. And that's basically not that that's what I expected. It's just, I, I, this is yeah one of the clearest ones that I got right. I was staying away from him in every single fantasy draft. It didn't matter if it was Roto or, or points or not, but yeah, this is definitely a guy that has to make some adjustments. If he wants to get back to that 2021 level, that just was not sustainable. That dude is mid. He is yoked though. He is yet, but he's mid. Yeah. Um, next one. This one I also felt pretty confident about. Nicky Lopez was one of the weirder breakouts. He qualified for my list because he was just bad before, and then now he was average. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the that's like the funniest one on this. It was just like <laughs> I'm like looking through the criteria. Just like, yeah, <laughs> breakout up to <laughs> league average 106 WRC plus last year, and then he just went back to literally doing exactly what he had done before. He had a 56 WRC plus in 2019, 53 in 2020 jumped up to 105 and then back down to 57. So like 50s is his range and it makes so much sense. He just doesn't hit the ball with any authority. He's not like super fast. Like he's pretty fast. He's good at stealing bases. I think that's because he's boys with Whit Merrifield who's no longer on the team, but it it's like, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't, I would, did not expect anything from him. He just like does not hit the ball with any authority and just had a pretty lucky BABIP last year, 2021. And yeah, it's a, uh, if you looked at his projections, it was pretty easy to tell that he wasn't going to be able to do this. And then also I was like, oh, he might not even play a lot. He did play a lot, which is goofy of the Royals because he sucked, but he's a really good fielder. So he made up for it that way. But yeah, that's crazy. Holy moly, he had a 5.9 war season in 2021. Good God. Right? Oh my Lord. Yeah. So yeah, we knew that wasn't happening again. Oh yeah. Looking at his savant page is hilarious. <laughs> he's so bad. Yeah, he uh, doesn't strike out that much. No, but also but he he's in the to... he's in the first percentile for hard hit in percentage. everything. He's no, he's in the first percentile for hard hit percentage. Second for average exit velocity. Second second percentile in barrel in barrel percent. Um, he's yeah, six. Who has a worse barrel percentage than one point five percent? Probably Hanser Alberto, if I had to guess. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. Oh no! I have to know. <laughs> I've got a magic gal. That's a good one. David Fletcher. Probably Fletcher. No, they're, they're all, all better than him, man. I don't know. Don't know. You can Maybe just Brad pull up Phillips. the list. It, I got you. This might <laughs> I, know, be it. I know what I want to guess. Yeah, that all is right. not good. Keep guessing. I'm pulling it up. Second in your percent. Brett Phillips. I'm still pulling. Barrels, 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 barrels per plate appearance. Is that what we want? want barrels per batted ball or barrels per plate appearance? Uh, I don't know. Switch it around. Oh, there's a lot of guys below in. Oh, some of we've talked about. Ooh. Frank. <laughs> no. Rafael Ortega. No. Really. Not and not amongst the breakouts. Someone we oh. talked about earlier. Shoot, what are we even talking about? Also, a guy that has that dog in him oh. is the teammate of the other guy that we were talking about. Two wow. guys on the same team. One of them has that dog in him. Is one of them, Ryan Tapia. Uh, no. Jason Hayward. No, bro. Who is the epitome of got that dog in him? There's so many players, though. No, the one guy that I always say every time I see him, I say it because it, like the meme like originated from him, basically. I honestly, draw him like man, Miles Straw, bro. Oh yeah, that's right. You know, Nikki, Stephen Kwan, Nikki Lopez at the same time also didn't hit a single dinger. So yes, you know, they got that. Yeah. Joey Wendell, Adam Frazier, Stephen Kwan, IKF, Miles Straw, Jose Iglesias. Is Joey Wendell really that bad? 
He had a pretty solid season, but now he does not barrel the ball. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, so those are the guys. Uh, I'll keep it moving, though. Next guy on the breakout list is uh, Austin Riley. He broke out huge last year, and then he actually was better this year, which I thought was really cool because I bought in on him because I thought you know the, the gains he made in the strikeout rate department were – gonna stick i didn't think he was gonna bat 300 again but i thought the power was gonna be there and he would bat around 270 man batted 273 with 38 home runs at 142 wrc plus exactly what i saw coming i i think he's a really great hitter he's gonna be really good for a long time and yeah i felt really good about that one for the whole season yeah saying that was a buy big hit riley's really good yeah and then i think this might be the last one brandon crawford there's two more. This is the second to last one. All right. Brandon Crawford, I had a buy, I think, probably because of the Giants bias. But I just thought the changes he made to his game were, were too good to go away. He just, like, was hitting the ball with more authority than he ever had before. And then he – I think he just stopped. I think he just didn't do that anymore. He had, like, a 11% barrel rate, and then he just cut it in half. He just didn't barrel the ball anymore. So I don't know what happened. I guess it was just the one-year wonder breakout or whatever at the age of – 34 super weird uh, brandon crawford always will be one of my favorite giants he's just such a great shortstop but yeah he was not good at batting this last year 87 wrc plus is a huge drop off from the 138 he had the year before so i was clearly wrong about that one by a lot by a lot that one was uh made me look stupid yeah brandon crawford stinks and then the last one Handle. is Luis. Urias. Yes, he is old. The last one is Luis Urias, the Milwaukee Brewers. I was really confident about this one because I thought this was like the secret guy that I had found that was going to be really good, like how, like just continue to improve. And honestly, I bought and he did exactly what he did last year. So I think that's sort of a win for me, but he was also like injured for part of the year. He's He didn't play the first month of the season because of the injury and then had weird stuff going on in the second half. But he literally had a WRC plus two points lower and was just like basically the same guy he was last year, just over a slightly fewer amount of games, 31 games. But I, I thought he was going to take another step forward. I still think I win this one because I said bye and he did what he did last year, which is what I was sort of doing in that exercise. But yeah, d- uh, definitely disappointed because I literally took him in like every single one of my fantasy leagues. Cause I was like, this is going to be like the guy nobody sees coming that like takes another step. And he did not. I'm gonna call this. Uh, I'm gonna call this a loss for you because you put a typo in the article. No, where? Uh, the WRC plus says 111, and Fangraph says 112. Jake. No, no, you that's not a typo. I'm telling you, it changed because a few of them were like that. Oh, really? I don't know if that's like a retroactive thing that has to do with like them recalculating WRC plus because of a change in like league environment or or ballpark, but some of them changed by one point. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have made a typo by one point like that. That that would be goofy. I, I'm like a thousand percent sure that it's because they recalculated it and it changed. So yeah, Jake's they're making capping. me look stupid. Jake's capping. Oh, I don't Jake's even know capping. what that means. Jake's I'm wearing a baseball cap. Yeah, Jake's yeah. capping this dude's line. Um, I mean, I'd say it's. I'd say it's a win because it's if they sustained. Yeah, they sustained. He did. It. He did. He did. He just didn't make another step. He's, no, which which is more still, of a hope, good. more of a hope. Right. I, I'll say I'll say yeah, but also kind of disappointing. All right. So what is that? What was my percentage there? So we had. So you got Urias right. You got Crawford wrong. So there's one. Okay. One. one out of two, and then Riley, Riley right. right. Two out of three. Lopez right. Three out of four. Or three O'Neal out of four. right. Four out of five. Robert wrong. Four out of six. Vlad wrong. Four out of seven. Ortega, right. Five out of eight. Mullins, right. Six out of nine. Nice. What did we say for Buxton? We kind of gave Wrong. out. Like, no, yeah, that one, I don't know. Uh, and Six out of ten. Schwindel, super duper unbelievable. Six out of eleven. That's better than 50%. I'll, I'll take it. Um, I thought I did better, to be honest. Um, but yeah, missing out on like Vladdy. And and Buxton, which I think those are pretty weird ones. 
to be honest, because of the injuries and the Vladdy still being pretty solid. But yeah, uh, six out of 11, that's a, that's a pretty solid percentage. Let's see if I can build on it this year. Uh, when I write this article again, I'm sure I'll do it again. It, it was a lot of work. I think I wrote too many words last year. Definitely looking forward to that article. Me too. And we'll talk about that whenever it comes out. Huh? Oh, yeah. That is all we have for tonight's episode of Free Baseball. We're on for almost two hours now. We've uh, done it. We did it again. We're back to the long podcast. Don't have a closer because uh, just don't have one. Stop asking. Well, it's like 1130, isn't it, for you? Yeah, it's like 1127. <laughs> when do you have to wake up? Uh, 620. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, you better get to bed. <laughs> yeah, okay. But anyway, join us next week for episode number 37 of free baseball hopefully we'll get to talk about some cool free agent stuff Mm -hmm. um and the and mvp yeah yeah Yeah. um where uh manny machado is going to win nl mvp and paul goldschmidt is going to fall in all um so join us next week for that you can check me out on twitter where i should post do a bunch of stuff um at dvs bird on twitter.com it's now owned by elon musk hopefully he won't shadow pan me um i hope he does (laughs) I hope we shadow me with you too. Um, <laughs> you can follow Jake Crumbler at Jake Crumbler. It's super easy. That's his name. Um, read all of the things Jake writes and puts out of his face hole on the internet uh, at theathleteshub.org. Yeah. Org. Yeah. And pitcherlist.com and baseballhq.com. Uh, yeah. I need to get writing. Me too. We'll collab on something. We'll do something. Let's do it. Yeah. We'll make stuff for baseball. We both like baseball. That's why we do this thing. Well, it's all right, I guess. Just talked about it for two hours, and I don't really like baseball that much. It's all right. It's got lots of numbers and stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Guys, hit, guys hit the orb with the stick. I like that. Um, but yeah, that's all we got for the night. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. So, that's I thought it. you were Davis. My name's on the screen, Jake. Mm, you just said you were tired. <laughs> All right. Talk to y'all. I changed, I changed my mind. Don't don't join us to the next pod because I'm, I'm going Davis to Davis quits. Join I'm, me. <laughs> yeah. Join join Jake because I'm quitting. Okay. Deal. See ya.